good evening to everyone and welcome to today's session today we shall have a discussion on uh, proptosis what are the various causes leading to it blindness control program which is the community medicine part of ophthalmology <clears throat> and we will also have a review on uh, optic neuritis one of the favorite topics of the examiner amblyopias which are very very preventable having had already mastered the topic of strabismus amblyopia is only a corollary for the main theory of uh, the strabismus then if time permits we will also have a review on the various glaucoma drugs and the midriadics which is going to be the prime part of our today's uh, exploration we invite our uh, online students dr vikas vidushi teju neena rohit raipur karna and uh, vaizag tirupati guntur and uh, from today we have the glorious gladiators from uh, Kadapa Medical College wherein this session is being broadcasted on to the live session in the Kadapa Medical College also so doctor proptosis it is that forward displacement of the eyeball beyond the orbital margin as all of you know broadly we divide it into unilateral bilateral acute intermittent or uh, pulsating that's how clinically we can be able to divide it so what are the various causes of unilateral proptosis the other day we have solved mcqs on proptosis whether unilateral or bilateral the most common cause of the proptosis is thyrotoxicosis associated with the graves ophthalmopathy graves disease is what you have to basically remember so we also have dr bharati manas kunal jabalpur etc joining please let me know is the voice is clear loud audible or not please punch in the chat window that assures me doubly that the voice is very clear <clears throat> yeah so what are the causes of unilateral proptosis very good clear we have dermoid cyst congenital cystic eyeball or orbital teratoma traumatic lesions can also lead to unilateral proptosis now this is a classical example someone presenting with hemosis in a toxic state along with the proptosis you think of the possibility of cavernous sinus thrombosis now what are the inflammatory lesions any orbital cellulitis panophthalmitis cavernous sinus thrombosis anything can be responsible similarly pseudo tumors tuberculoma certain circulatory disturbances like orbital varics varics why do you need to remember this is quite often asked in as an mcq in the entrance exam intermittent proptosis you need to remember orbital varics then similarly cysticercus cellulose can affect the eyeball and can also lead to development of proptosis so what you have here is a orbital varix are you able to see doctor this is the normal eye glow this is the place where you are having that venous accumulation of the vessels which is orbital varix which is leading to proptosis now what is a very peculiar thing about an orbital varix you can see this 56 year old man his right eyelid is bulging whenever he is straining like coffee so this kind of a intermittent proptosis unilaterally whenever the person strains it will appear otherwise it won't appear is a classical feature of a orbital varix is what i want to underscore to all of you 
Now, when the upper eyelid had been uh, surgically elevated, then you can see the presence of how a typical varix looks like. Now, we said cysticercosis. This is a classical clinical case of a subconjunctival cysticercosis, which led to the dacryoadenitis and proptosis. And after treating the patient for six weeks with albendazole and prednisolone, once more the normal eye contour had been restored. Then mucoceles of the paranasal sinuses can lead to proptosis. One of the favorite MCQ, mucosil in which location commonly involves? It is the frontal mucosil. In this lady, the frontal bone is having a mucosil, which is leading to the development of uh, proptosis. So this is another example where you can see this is the typical mucosil in the frontal bone, which is leading to the pushing of the globe anteriorly, leading to the proptosis. Now what are the bilateral causes? One important cause we need to remember is a craniofacial dysostosis, tower skull it is called as, oxycephaly, can lead to development of proptosis. Then any rickets, acromegaly, osteitis, deformance, McLuhan syndrome, etc, etc. Now, thyrotoxicosis in Graves ophthalmopathy. Any thyrotoxicosis or hyperthyroidism, can you call it as Graves disease, doctor? No, sir. Only when the hyperthyroidism is associated with uh, ophthalmopathy, then it becomes Graves. It is one of the essential criteria before labeling it as Graves is presence of ophthalmopathy should be there. So, thyrotoxicosis is one of the important cause for both, uh, the most common cause for both. Uh, the unilateral and bilateral proptosis is what you have to emphatically remember. Now, are there any tumors? Yes. Are there any tumors? Can you please check? Vidushi is unable to listen. Unable to listen. Maybe her local audio settings may be problematic. Let the support help out. Yeah. So, symmetrical lymphoma or any secondaries from the neuroblastoma, nephroblastoma, especially you can see this chain. He had a neuroblastoma, secondaries to neuroblastoma going to the orbit is very, very common, which can lead to development of proptosis. Now, this is a 17 year old male who is showing a right upper lid swelling with the forward displacement of his right eye and later on he is being found to be acute myeloid leukemia. So that leukemic infiltrates also can lead to the development of uh, the uh, proptosis is what you have to fundamentally remember. Similarly, histiocytosis, vaginous granulomatosis, etc, etc. Now, what are the causes of acute proptosis? Mucosil in a ethmoid a good number of times can burst open into the orbit. Orbit has a close relationship with ethmoid sinus. Please check Vidushi Raju. Uh, Vidushi is having a problem with her audio. Any settings problem is there? You please be here. Yeah. So, rupture of ethmoidal mucosil is very, very important cause of an acute uh, uh, proptosis. Now let us see one classical case. This guy presented with an acute proptosis. When you have done the imaging, you can see in the ethmoid sinus there is a mucosil which has burst into the globe, which has led to the development of this proptosis. Then among intermittent proptosis, what is the most important cause? You are not going to forget doctor. Orbital varix is what need to be remembered. This is another example. A patient with uh, acute proptosis because of uh, a orbital varix, which can sometimes be intermittent. Now, if there is a pulsating proptosis, what are the causes? Is another important question. So, 
congenital meningocele neurofibromatosis meningo encephalocele anything can lead to a pulsating proptosis now there are few conditions where actually there is no proptosis but the eyes look as such there is proptosis pseudo proptosis typically where do you see myopic eyes are big hypermetropic eyes are small that is our deal right so any high axial myopia any bufthelmos any condition leading to detraction of the upper eyelid or if the opposite eye is having a anophthalmos then that can lead to pseudo proptosis is what you have to basically remember now what are the important uh, diagnostic findings you be there with the cam so what are the important diagnostic findings in proptosis there can be a keratico cavernous fissure especially after a trauma then such a proptosis will also have bruy which is an important problem any anterior orbital lesion trans elimination will help you to discover then any proptosis if it leads to optic nerve compression then it lead to afferent pupillary defect if you throw the light then the pupil doesn't constrict so marcus gun pupil can be suggestive of an optic nerve compression then uh, if you do fundoscopy in case of meningiomas there can be a optociliary shunt which can be found now comes a very important mcq in which causes of proptosis there is a restriction of the ocular motility what is your answer doctor typically whenever proptosis is associ associated with some infiltration into the extraocular muscles as what you see in the case of uh, thyroid ophthalmopathy not only proptosis even restriction of the movement of the eyes is also a very very important feature so how do you basically diagnose a case of uh, proptosis doctor we use a exophthalmometry where the protrusion of the apex of the cornea from the outer orbital margin is calculated any difference of more than 2 mm between the two eyes is considered to be significant so we use a exophthalmometry in order to make a diagnosis of proptosis so these are five to six important points that you need to ultimately know in the topic of uh, the proptosis doctor